Welcome back. Now we're finally ready to start learning how to solve higher order differential equations. And the differential equation we'll be working on today is the second derivative of y with respect to time minus 4 times the first derivative plus 3, whoops, 3y is equal to 0. And we want to find a function, y, a function of, of time, that satisfies this differential equation for all values of t. So let's just take a look at this differential equation. The highest derivative is the second derivative, which means it's second order. Uh, we're not multiplying any of these derivative terms by any other derivative terms, which means it is linear. Uh, we have all the derivative terms grouped on one side, and all of that is equal to zero, which means it is homogeneous. And because the factors in front of all the derivative terms are just constants, like 1, negative 4, and 3, we call it constant coefficients. So this is a second-order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. And let's get started. Now, before we actually do any math, let's just take a look at this conceptually speaking. What is this differential equation trying to say? It says that if we have a function y, and if we take the derivatives, and if we just add them all together, well, scale them by some constants and add them all together, that they all cancel out. So this function y cancels out with its, higher, with its derivatives. Now, that's a fairly rare property. You don't see it with most functions, like, especially not polynomials. Like, let's see what happens if y was equal to, like, t cubed. That means that the first derivative is 3t squared, and the second derivative is 6t. And if we plug in these values, we get 6t minus 4 times 3t squared plus 3 times t cubed is equal to 0. And we find that these values of t, they don't cancel each other for all values of t. They might cancel each other for one particular value, but we want this function to, like, cancel out for all values of t. So in order to find a function that will satisfy this, we need a function whose derivative terms somewhat resemble the actual function, so that when we add them all together, they cancel out. Now, out of all the functions, we know what function somewhat resembles its derivative. Well, the exponential function, well, I should say the derivative of the exponential function is itself. So this should hopefully be a really good candidate to try and find something that will cancel with its higher derivatives. The trouble is, we don't really know what exponent we should use for this exponential function. So we're just going to try something. We're just going to try the test function. Let's say y is equal to e raised to the r times t. We don't know what r is. We don't know what exponent will help satisfy this particular differential equation. But hopefully, by plugging in and checking, we'll hopefully figure out the value of r. So let's first start off by taking the derivative. So the first derivative is just y prime is equal to e to the rt times the derivative of the exponent, which is just r. And likewise, the second derivative y double prime is equal to r squared e to the rt. Now let's plug these derivative values in our original differential equation. So now we get r squared e to the rt minus 4 times the first derivative r e to the rt plus 3 times y, which is just plus 3 times e to the rt. All of this should be equal to 0. And if you notice, every single term has this exponential function in it. So we can factor that out to make life more convenient. So we have e to the rt times r squared minus 4r plus 3 is equal to 0. So this times this must be equal to 0. But let's just take a look at this. The, here we have the exponential function. 
and the exponential function never really equals zero for any particular value of t. I mean, it approaches zero as t goes to negative infinity, but it can never, act, it never actually crosses like the value t is, t is equal to zero. So this itself can't be zero. So in order for this expression to hold true, this must be equal to zero. So let's rewrite this. We need to find, oops, uh, we have r squared minus 4r plus 3 is equal to zero. And now we need to try and find a value of r that helps satisfy this equation. And notice we've gone from a differential equation to an algebraic equation. Now we just need to find the value of r that, make this, that makes this work. Now this equation right here it has a particular type of name. It's called the characteristic equation of this differential equation. Basically, what a characteristic equation means is, if you take a look at it, you can get this characteristic equation by, in a way, like replacing all the derivative terms with r terms. So instead of second derivative, we have r squared. Instead of negative 4 times the first derivative, we have negative 4 times r to the first power. And instead of 3 times, like, the zeroth derivative, quote-unquote, we have 3 raised uh, times r raised to the zero power, quote unquote. So this is the characteristic equation. We need to solve it. And we can just do that easily. Oops. That's just r minus 3 times r minus 1 is equal to 0, which means that r is equal to 3 and r is equal to 1. So we want to find a value of r that, for our test function, to help it satisfy this differential equation. And we found two values of r. We have found r is equal to 3 and r is equal to 1, which means the functions y is equal to e to the 3 times t, and y is equal to e to the 1 times t, or just t, should be functions that should satisfy this differential equation. So these should be two solutions. Now, I'm just going to rewrite the differential equation down here y prime prime minus 4y prime plus 3y is equal to 0. Let's just test to make sure these two uh, functions actually do satisfy this. Uh, let's start off with uh, y is equal to e to the t first, because that's easiest. The derivative, or y prime of this function, is just e to the t, and same with the second derivative. So if we plug in y is equal to e to the t, we get e to the t minus 4 times e to the t, plus 3 times e to the t is equal to 0. We can factor out an e raised to the t power and get 1 minus 4 plus 3 is equal to 0. And 1 minus 4 plus 3, that's just 0. So e to the t times 0 is equal to 0, and that is true. This function does indeed satisfy this differential equation. And likewise, we can easily just plug in our second value here. Um, to see if it satisfies it. So the second, first derivative of this is just 3 times e to the 3t, and the second derivative is 9 times e to the 3t. So if we plug in that, we get 9e to the 3t minus 4 times 3e to the 3t plus 3e to the 3t is equal to 0. And if we factor out e to the 3t, we get... 9 minus 4 times 3 is 12. Oops. There we go, 12. Plus 3 is equal to 0. In 9 minus 12 plus 3, that's just equal to 0. So we get 0 is equal to 0, and this second solution indeed satisfies this differential equation as well. So let's take a look at what we have, our two solutions. Now, if you watched the last video, you should be, note that these two solutions are linearly independent. We can't scale any one of these solutions to make it equal the other solution, or like can't make it cancel for all values of t. So we found two linearly independent solutions to this second order, oops, I have it written down here, the second order differential equation. But are these two solutions 
all of the solutions that to this differential equation? Can it describe every possible solution? Well, in order to find what satisfies every possible solution to this differential equation, we're going to need to find what's called the general solution. And we'll see in the next video, but the general solution to this differential equation is a linear combination of our linearly independent solutions. So in that case, our linear, uh, sorry, our general solution to this differential equation is going to be C1 times our first solution, e to the 3t, plus C2 times our second solution, e to the t. So we found the general solution to this differential equation and we'll see why this is the case in the next video.